there's a redundancy to this, um, to the nature of this information. Although we may deal with um, certain subject matters, there's a redundancy to this because there's a necessity to you being clear on this. without being enlightened further. And so, you know how we sit here um, <clears throat> time after time and we hear um, Brother Taj rattling off things just like that. You know, he just knows he'll say things like Ascature and Nom de Guerre and, you know, appropriate for or whatever that is. But sometimes we hear words that we don't say or ask the meaning of, but we hear it a lot and we wonder, what does that really mean? And so a conversation that I had, um, Brother Taj and I had just this week when we were putting the, the subject matter for tonight's teaching was I asked him what excature meant because I heard him say excature so much. And so he gave me an assignment. He actually told me that excature and hell were synonymous. Now, me having been a pastor for many, many years, I have absolutely never, ever, ever heard the word excature in relation to hell. When I think about hell, it was the place of fire and brimstone and punishment and so forth. You know the drill. But he said, no. He said, hell. He said, look it up in the Black's Law. Unfortunately, I have a fourth edition, Black's Law Dictionary. So I want you to look up hell. I want you to look up excature. And then we also started talking about the IRS. And so we like, how do all those go together? Well, actually, in Black's Law Dictionary, in the fourth edition, you will find that hell was the name formally, and then he's really big on etymology, formally given to a place under the excature chamber where the king's debtors were confined. So the debtor's prison was under the king's chambers and it was called hell. It was an excature chamber and it was also synonymous with the word that has come to mean a place of fire and brimstone and punishment that is really, you know, tied into whether or not we're good. In old English law, a chamber room or apartment, a judge's chamber, a treasury. Mm -hmm. This is this is to tell you how you know words words change. Excature chamber, of course, as I said, a court erected by statute is 31. Uh, edition 3C determines cause. Chamber, a room, or apartment in the house, and expenditure that department of the English government which has charge of the collection of the national, and I think it probably meant treasury or debt or something like that. Um, also, an ancient writ directed to the treasurer and the bearings of the expenditure forbidding them to do something. This, 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 dot, dot, dot. But what I'm trying to say is hell and expenditure are synonymous, and we've been told that hell has something to do with the place where the man in a red suit and the pitchforks and his demons are. But not far off. They really are there. It's just that there is the the concept. I always tell people when I was passing, if your concept is wrong, your conclusion is wrong, right? Um, also, but what Brother Taj let me know, um, it's actually when names change, the same the same function that the IRS is performing today. It's the same thing as hell and exeter uh, back in the day. And so I, I did my little research based on our little... Exeter spelling. 
Excature. I'm gonna actually I have a handout for you. I actually have a handout for you. And those of you who are watching by Facebook, um, I'll post it or do something um, if you if you if you like it. But I have a handout. So, but Excature. I told like he told me it's like X and checker with the Q U E R. So you know when you hear words and the moral of the story is. When we hear some of the words that roll so fluently off the tongue of our great teacher and you don't have an understanding or understanding of them, write them down as best you can phonetically, but ask him. Ask somebody um, what they mean because all these years I've been hearing him mention this over and over, off and on, and I really never knew. Most of you probably didn't. How many knew? <laughs> yeah, we'll see, but it's not good. That's like, what, three, four hands? So. How many of you out there knew? You, you let me know. You give me your response. Oh, well, over there. You know, over there. Yeah, how many of you out there knew? But it's important for us to know that when, how they put different labels on the radio. You all? That's the moral of the story. Brothers and sisters. This is back to, um, for those of you who are scholars and researchers, look up the conferences that they had on semantics. And um, so keep this in mind too, Dr. Mayo. Yes. Conference on Semantics. And keep in mind that um, when you're talking about the connotative linguistics that um, the people are suffering from in these days, um, it's not accidental. Meaning that the priesthood set up a conference by which they would introduce connotative linguistics just to dumb us down. So when people think about hell, you know, being underground, they were correct. But what the priesthood did made a mythical devil so you wouldn't look at them because they were the ones that are clear. And of course, when you were giving people information um, and you have people, although adults, have been trained from, from childhood to equate belief systems with knowledge, it's difficult to give them knowledge or information. And very often they get offended, they think they're attacking their beliefs or their religion. Uh, not knowing that the masses don't get religion, they get dogma. It's for control purposes. And so you've got to try to give them reference so they don't take it personal and reject knowledge. You know, for the sake of defending their beliefs that they think came from the Lord in heaven when it actually came from the Lords of London. So people don't understand or know that the operation of Inquisition government on the planet Earth is regulated by the District of London through the Lords of London under the Secret Treaty of Verona, with the secondary field men being what you call policemen that are a, a gang, the world's largest gang, um, evolved from European colonists in New York area. And they made agreements uh, with the um, operators of the United States Corporation Company to suppress and help them rob the Aboriginal people of the land of North America, i.e. that you traditionally have been hearing that are called Negroes, Blacks, Coloreds, Indians, Latinos, etc., all of whom are actually of Moorish descent. Are we clear? And the agreement with the European colonist contractors, or what you would call hired guns, there's a gang of them in New York, and they made contracts. And so they bought the corporate corporate operatives uh, who owned the United States Corporation registered in Puerto Rico and in France. They started buying uniforms to give them an air of legitimacy. They're actually hired gun. Fact. So when our people get confused when they see people were calling themselves law officers, policemen, going around. And of course, people who have been benefiting from the destruction of human life and 
colonization it, are not going to tell you these, these things. It's not in their interest. Do you, do you understand? So it's in their interest to, to deceive you. Does that mean that everyone that's a policeman is an evil person or has evil intent? No, it does not mean that. It means that what that order is for. They're higher killers. They are. You know, it might be uncomfortable for you to hear that. It's the absolute truth. You know, and, and so people who don't really understand this, it confuses them when they see that they want to murder or some young brother even if they're unarmed, and you see that happening a lot, and it confuses you, now you know why. Because they're not coming under all. They're mercenaries. They're commercial mercenaries. Write that down. They're commercial mercenaries. Now, logically, <clears throat> one of the keys of maintaining colonial operations is they set up the, the United States Corporation Company, which is a private corporation registered in Puerto Rico. This is what you need to understand. These are fundamentals that you need to be clear on. The United States is not a country. It's a private corporation. Registered first in France, collapsed by Abraham Lincoln, and then registered in Puerto Rico and has been operating ever since. And with its owners and its contractors and its private corporation representatives pretending to be government on the land of North America ever since. That's the real organized slavers operation that the masses don't know. But that all politicians know, all big time religious leaders know, and so, when people don't know this, they have a tendency to keep getting confused when they see or hear politicians say one thing and do another. They see big time ministers and pastors and religious leaders claiming to the public one thing, but they live a different lifestyle for themselves. And it confuses them. They're only confused because they, they don't know the real history. They don't know the foundation. Are we clear? So you're given a knowledge of the real foundation of political operations, not to turn you against legitimate government, but to make you aware of fraud government. Are we clear? Because what you're suffering from is impostorship. Are we clear? Now, we've been over this before, but again, a lot of times when we're going into different subject matters, a lot of you who, who are scholars know these things, but a lot of you who are not scholars don't have this information unless you're in your highest degrees of masonry. Like if you're a grandmaster, potentate, Illuminati, Knights Templar, Eastern Star, Daughters of Isis, Daughters of American Revolution, Knights of Malta, Knights of Columbus, of Shriner, People in those degrees know this information, but you gotta remember most of those secret orders have death holes. So they're not going to speak on this information. Are we clear? But being more American and heirs to the to the estate that has been under our occupation, it is our duty and our birthright. And it's all that has been taken from you with some or some people use the process try to get um, some kind of control of the system trust system I don't know, um, after the fall of the Red House. Um, these all things are tied to the real politics of the world, are we clear? 
But knowing that our people don't have a background in scholarship, it is incumbent upon those who know to tell those who do not know. And so we want to hit on certain fundamental points so that you can have a reference point to research on your own. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. This information is not given to you to make you a follower. So get that out of your head if it ever dawned on you. Are we clear? This is not for followers. This is for responsible nationals and citizens of the land. Are we clear? To enforce the national will. The national will are called constitutions and treaties. It is the supreme law of the land. Are we clear? Your personal opinion and emotionalism is not to be interjected. Meaning that we've discussed things and you can have an opinion on something that's not denying you that. But it must be in harmony with principles or what you call maxims of law. Maxims of law and principles apply universally. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Yes. It's like two and two is four. Your beliefs are not to be interjected into that. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So thus, one and one and one and one is four. And, and don't make it personal. Although it can affect you personally. Can, can you understand? That's what we call you are guiding your life on, on principles that delude to force certain through slavery, negativity, and falsehood. Because it doesn't go together. Are we clear? Because your concepts will develop incorrectly, whether you're reading the Bible, Uaspi, Torah, Tanakh, Hexatol, Pentatol, Quran, Davidus, Uaspi, or any of the holy books, you must have a foundation of truth. You must come from a foundation of truth in order to properly use those books. If your concepts are wrong, your outcomes, as Dr. Naiwa said, will be wrong. Now, you have to get your ego out of the way and your own biases out of the way so that you can look at things honorably. And for those of you who know you with Septuaginta, are we clear? You've got to understand how it's been operating. And those have been the real operations, and this is why the priesthood have always had problems with Yahshua. This is why they actually why they uh, assassinated his character and worked with the Romans to assassinate Yahshua. And then they had a meeting with the Romans and changed his name to Jesus, knowing that that's not his name. You know, and so when you look at the substitute principle that's put upon humanity, understand it has an old origin, but the operation hasn't changed. That's what you need to understand. The operations of color have not changed. And this is why it's important for you to have a background, a scholarly background, so that you can recognize when the con game is still being played on you, just given a different name. So when people, as an example, when people are looking at the inquisition revenue services operated by the uh, Inquisition General Thomas D. Torquemada. Scholars know that the IRS is the Inquisition Revenue Services. But a non scholar doesn't know that because they see, they hear Internal Revenue Service said by Skull and Bones member Woodrow Wilson, 1913 to 1916. So a scholar knows that they're absolutely the same operations given a different name in order to deceive the people. But a scholar and a mason already knows that because they're, they're already told. That's what gives them the advantage over the masses. What gives, say, masons power in society is that they're told certain truths that the masses don't get. What gives Illuminati members power they have certain fundamental knowledge that the masses don't get. What gives the big time preachers power? They have that not Masonic knowledge that the masses don't get. Why do these people get upset when someone like me speak of this information openly? Because they pay thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of notes for that knowledge and they get it codified and then they take defos, 
not to reveal it, but they get comfortable jobs and they get kickbacks and then they act like it's a separation of church and state when they know it absolutely is not and never was. Are we clear? And it's not to put anybody down, it's just simply to tell you the truth. And you can do with that truth what you will, but understand it's your responsibility. It is your responsibility as nationals of the land and as for the European sons and daughters who are United States citizens under the juristic operations of Josele of the Nationalization Act to enforce the Constitution and treaty. It is your duty, it is not your option. Because those are national wills. Your failure to do so is called a tax acquiescence and an abandonment. But with that abandonment comes the loss of your estate, whether you knew about it or whether you didn't know about it. It's an abandonment. Are we clear? It is that principle of abandonment which is why you're given this information. Knowing that most of you don't know that you're held to that status. Like for instance, um, logically many of you who come here to the House of Reawakening Minds know this, but I know that some of you don't. And some of you may have heard about some of this information but didn't exactly know how to put it together. Do you, you understand what I'm saying to you? Um, and so you've got to keep this in mind too. Law and history goes together. Um, it is not taught to persons who are held to servitude because it's not in the interest of those who are administering the Sister Q Trust and the Global World Trust to tell you. Why? Because they're living off your virtues. Write that down, living off your virtues. We're going to go on a synopsis a little bit so that you can, you can have a background. And as um, many of you who've been here regularly already know, some of the stuff we do redundantly. But what you will find is if you test most people, just like Dr. Nayela did, and many of you have been here often, you can see you know, many seats, and we're talking adults, not children. And she asked a fundamental question of civilization, and she counted four hands. So intelligence tells you what danger is the off or are the offspring in? Many of us are grandparents, and then some of us are direct parents. What chance do the children have when the adults don't even know the rules? And yet we sit around and we pontificate. We talk about our special personal relationship with Allah and Jesus and God and Muhammad and Buddha and Confucius and don't even know the basic rules that run society and suffer from injury by the day and out of ignorance blame the devil for it. And of course, in the real world, we can do that and there's no remedy because it doesn't work. That's called dogma. And that's what's been given to the masses for control purposes. They've been given dogma in the name of religion, not knowing they got counterfeit law, it's called color law, color of authority, and color of office. They got dogma in place of religion. And they have fiat in place of money. And these are the tools of the priesthood for governing the planet. And this is what's been in operation under Inquisition operations. And so fundamentally, just fundamentally, those things should be clear in your head. And all of us, at some point, dealing with any of these issues, come short or flawed. And this is why you come together, so that we can pull each other's coattail. Are we clear? And logically, if the children are, are raised in a culture, a dead culture, logically, they will never compete in the real world. So, watch how we do things. If you pay attention to us as a people, we will fund multiple alphabet soup organizations to deal with the symptoms of a root problem that our people have never really studied. If you ask most of the people, um, 
a question like, um, slavery has been institutionalized, and we know that the word slavery is used connotatively, because slave is actually a short, or a brief, um, of actually a nationality of the Slovakian nations. We won't get into that, but it's, so a scholar knows the difference be, between the connotative use of it and its proper use. But in a serious law argument, if you have a, a breach and a tort, and you use that in a law argument for a, a restoration probably of a right or restitution, the opposing party actually can beat you in the case if you use the word connotatively. But yet, amongst the masses, it's commonly used, and they would, they would look at it as if it's denotation. Not understanding that in a law argument, these subtle semantics can win or lose a right of claim. And because the platform of forced servitude is based on connotative linguistics presented to the masses in order to institutionalize their own ignorance, which is what the barristers of England did in their conferences on semantics deliberately in order to maintain what is called connotatively institutionalized slavery at North America under the administrative powers of the military complex of the Jesuit order known as United States Corporation Service Company. And to present that political platform as if it is the country. And that the trading banner in commerce that they owe in treaty operations for securing the rights, unalienable rights of the people, which is actually a trading banner, banner of amity and commerce that has been falsely presented as, quote unquote, the American flag. And so the masses have been sorely and severely miseducated and actually encouraged to agree and consent to their own enslavement, to that ignorance. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. As a countermeasure and a restoration of right law and constitution and treaty enforcement, one man named Timothy Drew is also known as Prophet Nubrali, established Old Canaanite Temple in 1913 AD as a direct rebuttal to the abrogation of the treaty and constitution, which are the supreme law of the land at North America. That is the root of the founding of the Morris Divine and National Movement, 1913. As a countermeasure, Skull and Bone member Woodrow Wilson met with the bankers and representatives of the Lords of London under the secret treaty of Verona on Jekyll Island, right off Georgia, to sell the government to the Jesuits in order to counter Nobudrali because they were already in breach of the treaty and constitution to the heirs of the estate who by this time, most didn't know they had an estate. Not only did they not know they had an estate, most of them were in or held as, as stateless persons. Such stateless persons are called or tagged by what is known nom de guerre. Those are war names. Nom de guerre. And I'll write that down for you, for, you, for those who don't know. Now, non here are spurious names, and it can also be referred to as misnomers, but this is the proper law designation for it. 
And Nnamdi Deer will be known on another level, another level as brands. Are we clear? And so when you hear of uh, some of the history when they talk about they branded some slaves, they will present to you only an image of hot irons like they did cattle. And that's the image that's taught in the John D. Rockefeller school systems. Are we clear? So according to Codes and Law, Codes and Law. It's French for the black hoods. All right. So those brands would be Negro, Black, Colored, Indian, Ethiopian, Misplaced, Latino. Those are our brands. And non de gear. Now, so logically, if people are raised with the concept that the brand is just a, the hot arms that they put on the cattle, because they did do that too, so don't mistake that. That would be called for the cattle. They substitute this. And sometimes they, they spell both ways. Sometimes with a double T. And that's for human trafficking. And the United States Corporation Company or the US democracy was set up specifically to administrate this operation. Are we clear? Distinguished from, distinguished from the United States Republic that was set up under the organic constitution and treaty between the Moors and the Deists that you know as Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, etc. They were Deists. You must understand that. If you don't know that your concepts have been wrong and logically will be wrong, and logically in a law argument for restoration or restitution, you will fail. Are we clear? That failure has continued to haunt the Aboriginal people at North America for both incompetent and disingenuous people alleging, alleging to honorably represent you, when in actuality they were actually working with the slavers. You say Dias, what does that actually mean? Dias, now, so this will be supplemental for your study. That's the proper name of the planet Mercury, which is a communication center in this particular solar system, which is represented by one of those golden candlesticks that you see in the mosques, churches, and synagogues. When you see the seven golden candlesticks, when you see in the book of Revelation, when he says, I heard a voice speak, a man speak with the voice of many waters, he was standing among seven golden candlesticks. One of the candlesticks is the altar. This is where you get this. This word from is derived from that from this 
Name of Mercury. Here you go. And because it's a communication center, the other planets or the seven golden candlesticks are not properly, but have been traditionally called deities because of communication. This is where you get deities from. Those who study the real culture of human existence on planet Earth, and particularly mainly Europeans who adopted Asiatic African culture and went to the ancient mystery schools of Egypt, that you call Egypt, or who are Masons, etc., are deists. Now you understand that? So when you talk about deists, you're talking about someone who studies Asiatic African culture, the original Kabbalistic and cosmological culture on Earth planet, which is really religion. Distinguished from dogma. So when you're talking to a deist, they deal with what's called maxims of law. And also seven hermetic principles, which is the principles of divine law, which are the phenomena that operate in the universe. And is universally at the foundation of all your major religions. But is kept amongst the priesthood, not given to the masses. This is where Yahshua, that you know lately, being called Jesus, was arguing with the doctors of the law, also with the priesthood, who were stealing the widow's pennies, misrepresenting religion, because they were teaching dogma. And this is again why he had issues with him, and also why he assassinated him. So you really need to know the real history. So the same people that run around talking about they loving Jesus, we really his enemies. This is why the world's really messed up. You know, people's concept about how things really operate is totally, really incorrect. And again, when you get into real knowledge, you can understand how some people who have other agendas can get sensitive. But what I've told you is provable, and you can research it. Now, in order to deceive people, what they've done with uh, Joshua is, is actually mixed uh, the life of Serapis. Now that's to um, misrepresent Joshua. But that has pretty much satisfied the masses and kept them under control while they get raped to this very day. And this is why you see in certain communities where there's constant con conversation about salvation, but yet all you see is misery and death and jail and drugs and broken families while they're talking about salvation. It's kind of a contradiction, isn't it? So you kind of understand why that has a root. So you don't get angry, you tell, just tell the truth. And if they get the real history, they'll understand why they had the Nicene Council 225, 225 years. No, pardon me, I apologize, let me back up. 325, it's called the Nicene Council, 325. AD, and this is where the priesthood met to alter Yahshua's teachings in order to create solace systems for mind control. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Quick question. In reference to what you were saying about them studying the, um, about studying our history. Mike, Mike, where's the mic? About studying our history. Yeah. There was a question that I had posed um, about. Uh, Two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Right, we'll go in, regards, in regards to the bloodline. So, when now is that question any uh, less important? No, it's not less important. Let's put it this way, just relative to the bloodline. Uh, let's go back to the teachings of Yahushua. He says, 
I come amongst my own, and they receive me not. He's talking about bloodline. Okay. But he's also talking about airship. Okay. He's also talking about birthright. And he's also talking about the loss of that birthright. Okay, so with them studying our history, they will begin to understand that Yahshua had hair like lamb's wool, skin like burnished brass. That Jesus is actually a Roman substitute. Is a Paleolithic man placed on the wall representing the lords of London, told to the people that that is Yahshua, and they're actually worshiping the Romans that murdered Yahshua. That's how things have worked. And, that and of course, nature does not recognize personal station. So there's a consequence when you support a lie. Because it is a lie. But it doesn't mean that people who fall for it is necessarily evil. They just miss. They misinformed, they misled, they're deceived. But in order to make things start working for you in your interest spiritually, you cannot be spiritually corrupt. Nature does not give you that break. In other words, we can sit around and pat each other's on the back because we pontificate and talk about our personal relationship with God and everything. We can do that all day long. Nature does not recognize whatever we say. Nature only recognizes merit. This is why one of the Kabbalistic lessons that the, that the Nazarene gave was to remind you so that you don't get arrogant. He would say, the sun shines on the good as well as the evil, which means the law is neutral. What point did you, what point you don't get this? That you don't have the option of beliefs. It has nothing to do with what you believe. It has to do with how the universe works. How the communication of nature's law and nature's God works. This is why when you see in the Universal uh, Declaration of uh, Independence where the deists that you have told where the founding fathers mentioned nature's law and nature's God. It's talking about the Kabbalistic foundation of moral maxims of law that apply universally. See, it's important for you to know that because it's important for you to understand how government operates. Are we clear? And, and when you think that people that are uh, allegedly in government are moral or ethical, you don't get caught up in personalities or party. You measure them by constitutional principles. Those are maxims. They're predicated on maxims of law. Are we clear? So, you do not get caught up in, that's my cousin, because he's an imam, therefore, because he says Allah and Jesus and Muhammad, he's right. No, it don't mean him right. Or, oh, he's Baptist, I don't listen to him. No, you measure them by the rules. The same rule applies to everybody. But you got to know what the rules are. If you don't know maxims of law, you get caught up in these tags and these brands and these claims that people make, most of which they don't live up to. <laughs> You don't get caught up in those things. If you really pay attention to the instructions of Yahushua, who the people commonly know now as Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, who came about to complete the works of Jesus, because they were distant cousins. Those who know the history know that they were distant cousins. Um, that the rules didn't change. They may have been different nation states, but the rules didn't change. Even their greetings were the same. Yahshua, when Yahshua met you, he spoke Aramaic. Assalamu alaikum. That's how he greets you. Peace be unto you. That's Aramaic. Prophet Muhammad, Assalamu alaikum, Arabic. They're dialectically sister languages. But when the people repeat Yahshua's greeting, no. Why? Because they would recognize that he's Muslim. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and then they would reject it because the priesthood told them. Even though all the teachings came from the East. You, you see? And even when they would present them, they would deal with the cosmological principle of the three stars, representing the three kings. You know, with a crescent and a star, which is Esther in the Bible. It's star -tale. Easter. Vernal equinox. Scholars know that, but the masters don't. So 
The ignorance is used by the scholars to keep the masses sticking each other with toothpicks, claiming to have the best God, when actually they're violating their, their own claim. This is, again, why the world's in trouble. And of course, it, it creates a dark platform for the dark priesthood to operate. This is what we're dealing with right now. What is it and why is it when you do research? Why did Jesus come? Why did Muhammad come? They were social reformers. They didn't teach religion. They taught social reform. What people did is use their names and created dogmas, converting the science into dogma and then presenting the dogma to the masses as religion when it's actually counterfeit. This has been the source of their wealth. Upon that foundation, the Pope of Rome set up what is known as the Global World Trust to administer all estates and peoples who were conquered under the Christian Crusades and the Spanish Inquisition. Global World Trust. And specifically and most succinctly after the fall of the Red House in 1492. That's the power move. And that's called Romanus Pontifex. And of course the Unum Sanctum policy where they declared the descendants of the Moors dead at sea until proven otherwise. And thus all estates were claimed under the crusade operations of Constantine and his mother hiding behind the name Christianity. When in fact they really weren't, weren't Christians. They use it as a front. That's the real history. And that's the basis of your enslavement to this very day. And logically, if you don't know that history, your approach to liberating yourself will probably fail. Because if you don't know what you're dealing with, you can't fix it. This is, again, the source of their power. Give him the mic, please. Can you expand on the Spanish Inquisition and the Red House? All right, so the Red House, you'll sometimes hear that phrase in, in different societies, in masonry and shriners, Red House, Blue House, etc. Right? You'll even see the Romans, when they're doing operations here, they wear a red tie, and then they wear a blue tie. That's related to that Inquisition. Who was that Inquisition against? The Spanish Inquisition is the Inquisition against the Moors and Yahudi, which is misrepresenting history as Jew. Both of which are you. Moor is a short for al Moroccan or Moroccan. Moroccan is a modern term for Moabite. When you look in the Bible, Book 39, and you'll see Ruth the Moabites, Yahshua's great-great-grandmother, she's a Moor. It is the people with hair like lambs or skin like burnished brass who now have been serving Romans, particularly ever since the Nazarene came amongst them and they received the not. Now they're serving Rome, they got Roman names, they're stateless persons, they think human beings are crayons and have no knowledge of their bloodline. And that's the foundation of the contemporary world's politics and modern contemporary servitude, which is called connotatively slavery. Thus, you must understand about the Pope's global world trust in order to understand why you must put everything in trust today to begin to even have some kind of claim of a state. But then if you don't know it, logically, you're not going to even think about even dealing with any of this. It just doesn't, it's not, it doesn't make sense to you. It, you can't relate to something when you don't have a foundation. I mean, you don't do things because somebody says do it. You've got to have some kind of a knowledge on why is, it, what, why is he talking about this stuff? You know, this is what you must also recognize, you know. People in government and in secret societies know this. This is what they know.
That is called the equilateral triangle. It's also a symbol of civilization on the Earth planet. The eye is a Allah and Horus. And in Basin, it's called the Eye of Job. In Rome, amongst the priesthood, it's called the Eye of Job. Amongst Masons, it's called the Mountaintop. And those who are given the Kabbalistic knowledge are taken to the Mountaintop. That's those degrees. Those are called Masonic degrees. Masonic degrees means mother and son, or Isis, which is really all set and Horus on her knee. It would also be symbolized amongst the Constantinians as a statue of Mary with Jesus on her knee. Same thing. Ma and son, and the study of Ma, son, masonry. That's what that is. That's why anybody in power wants to be a mason, because they've got to know how the world really runs, not what people believe. Whether they're Christian, Muslim, or Jew, I don't care what their front is, in secret, they're Masons. Islam is Masonry. I self love a master. On a dogmatic degree, it is no different than Christianity, Buddhism, stuff like that. The fundamentals, the roots are all the same. You'll find the roots, they have the same Kabbalistic foundation. Except that the masses don't know that it's Kabbalistic, because they, if, the, if the preachers tell the people the truth of the Kabbalistic base, they lose power over the people. It will liberate them. This is relative to when you hear the phrase by Yahshua when he says, Know ye the truth, and the truth will make you free. He's talking about the priesthood, not some devil, the priesthood. And it was the priesthood that, who delivered him to Rome. Well, no devil that delivered Jesus to Rome, it was the priesthood. Who gets charged? The mythical devil. See why the world's in darkness? A child can see that, but you give a book, the child stuck to get them, or the Bible, and ask the child to just be honest. What does the book say? Who delivered Jesus to the Romans? The, the preachers, the rabbis, will be saying the devil did. The child will see the book says and see that the priesthood did. See why the world's in trouble? That's why the truth must come from the mouth of babes, because the adults are liars. They're lying hypocrites and will sacrifice the children, which they have been doing, and then blame the devil for the conditions of the world. No, they're hypocrites. They've been dealing with dogma and they've been promoting dogma and then blaming the devil instead of taking responsibility for their own corruption. That's why Jesus was disputing with the doctors of the law. Who were the doctors of the law? Priesthood. What were they doctoring up? The maxims of law. That even a child could understand until they mess with it. So the world is in darkness because of priesthood. But nobody wants to say that, do they? Because it kind of rocks the boat. So we'd rather see this destruction and misery on the planet because they don't want to rock the boat. This is where we are today. Are we clear? They're playing it safe and their babies are dying. Anybody that knows real politics, ticks, honestly, knows that the church are the largest stockholders in the world arsenal. The war machine that kills humanity, the church, is the biggest stockholder. Why do nobody want to say that openly? Because they're members of that stock. Then they won't blame the devil for all the death that's on the planet. Because he goes to and fro the earth, devouring nations. They act like it's some mystery devil. No, it's not. It's these people claiming, 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 I say they are, to be so-called spiritual who are the beneficiaries of that destruction. Under the secret treaty of Rona, now you understand why the priesthood don't show the people their oath to the Pope of Rome, Article 3 of the secret treaty of Rona, and therefore they can't and will not relate hell in the ex chamber and the IRS of which they are stockholders. That's what the 501c3 Skull and Bones Agreement kickback is for. Keep them in line. 
you know, and, it, and so again, when you start dealing with scholarship, you start tying the puzzle together. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. And understand that has nothing to do with belief. That has to do with understanding what you're dealing with. Now, you want to liberate them babies in the next generation? You don't need no convince them that they are somebody. You need to tell them their bloodline. They don't need to be, you don't make, you need to make something artificial. Just tell them the truth. And they'll find out why they're in misery. Why their families are all broke up. Why 90% of the jails are loaded with our people. They're not going to sit around and talk about colors. They're going to talk about birthright theft. And the U.S. T-bonds that have been floating on the market since the Civil War, backing the United States Corporation Company's bankruptcy debt, put on the backs of the descendants of Moors branded as Negroes, Blacks, and Colors, that's the basis of their economics. So are they suffering because they got a wrong color? No, they're suffering because they're under a color of law. See the semantics? This is why the Pope himself had to tell the history because he already knew that the people were already sold out. And the only reason why he's telling them um, you can say that he maybe, maybe have some little bit of light of the angels, but you already know that the Manchurians are putting pressure on them, so you already know that that has much to do with it. Do you understand? Here we go, also, what I said. But the Pope tells you directly about what happened. Directly. You know, and then Obama went to. He cooked up went to Egypt and exposed the, the Masonic secret of the Deists, of the founding fathers. And why do they all have Korans? Because the United States Constitution comes from Muslim law. It's the world history. That's why they all have Moorish fences in their secret societies, although they tie the tassel down. You know, once you understand these things and you start looking at things realistically, you start getting rid of your own biases. Are we clear? Are we clear? And understand, it wouldn't confuse you when you go down, say, to a, a Masonic or Galia store, and someone who's a sick Jew is, is running it, and he got Moorish Fez, and he's selling sapphire rings with Allah on it, and it might confuse you. Because they deal with universal truth. They just give the clubism to the masses. But all of them got Korans. All of them got Septuaginta. All of them got Uwasti. All of them got the Four Beatus. All of them got Bible. All priesthood do. They got all the books. They just give the masses, according to the club, one of them to keep them under control. That's how it's been working. And logically, they don't want the masses to find that out. Because the masses might lynch them. Mm -hmm. Find out that they gave grandma's house to Reverend Pigfoot, mm -hmm. Pastor Pigfoot, and, and their grandchildren are now renting from some project that Pastor Pigfoot got some stock in mm -hmm. with the councilman downtown, mm -hmm. who he claimed to be separate. And then spending Jesus had with the Bahamas with the choir singers. <laughs> you know, this goes on, it's been going on forever. So long as they can get people looking at the mystery devil, they ain't paying attention to them. Or their misery. Or the stock market. Not knowing that they are the stock. And of course, when you inform the people, and you can show them the documents, it's kind of upsetting, you know, because they, they're believers. They're not knowers, they're believers. And then you give them knowledge, now they got to know, now they got to take responsibility. And a lot of them want to run back to the mental security blanket of belief that really doesn't work, makes them feel good. It doesn't change the poverty. It doesn't change the youth dying on the street younger and younger. It doesn't change the fact of broken families. It doesn't change the extra stealing people's accounts. Because 
the politicians and the preachers on it. see the devil over there and the devil. And, and you know, and that's the devil. And, and the devil. And they, and they keep, that's the password. And people keep looking over here. He's around here somewhere. And not paying attention to the one that's really robbing him. And that's how it's, you know, and it's, it's, it's true. But let's be honest, that it's been working. You know, but it's a dishonest position. It's a really dishonest position. Song, the brother. Song. The very thing, saying like, the very thing that you just mentioned about families being um, broken apart. Of course, that's part of the agenda. How do we, once we claim our nationality, how do we move through this system? That's part of it. Keep our families from one being All right. And we need our tax card. Now, now, let's look at, look at generally your question. You're talking about operative. How do you operate with this information? Correct. Let's look at, uh, as an example, I got here. say Isaiah as an example. And you can also look at Jeremiah. Um, I hold my hand out all the day long to a hard-hearted and rebellious people who are not called by my name. When they repent from their sinful ways, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Does land, L-A-N-D, sound like a cloud? Does L-A-N-D sound like a cloud? No. So that means the kingdom of the Lord is on the earth, isn't it? Yes. Where do preachers keep telling them where it's at? They say it's in heaven. That's heaven is wherever you make basically. It's here. But heaven and hell is conditional life. But the concept is dogmatic. They promote the dogma position to disconnect the people from the land. So the first issue, as, as an example, when you deal with the hexatol as it closes out, it says it has four chapters. It's called Malachi. And it says the Son of Righteousness arises with healing in his wings. And it's spelled like this. But it's a homonym sound like this. Because he's giving you the Kabbalistic foundation. And then the book closes out. It says, The Son of Righteousness arises with healing in his wings. Turn your hearts back to your mothers and fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Well, that's what you're suffering now. See, people have a book. But well, people really don't study those books because they don't have a populistic background. So they can see it, or I mean, and still don't see it. It's not that it's not there. It's that the Kabbalists ain't telling them the Kabbalistic foundation. Are we clear? So therefore, they remain in what is called a minor mind or minority state. And as minorities in a state law, a minor is not descendable. And so when you have adults that still have the mentality of a minor, they're classified as minority. And a minority is not heritable. Therefore, that gives the priesthood arbitrary default control of the global world trust. This is where the Cusick number comes in that uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt set up in 33. And also what Woodrow Wilson did in 13 of Jack Lyle. It's a continuation of the ex chamber operations. In other words, they put the people back in heaven. And see, so long as the people are looking at a mystery devil, they're not looking at these traitors, are they? They're not looking at the politicians and the preachers working together. See retreat of Rona, Article 3. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Now, in answering your question, because all of this answers your question. See, the honoring of your mothers and your fathers that your days may be longer upon the earth land is related to your estate that has been cribbed under Roman operations. The same Romans that murdered all the prophets are the same Romans that are murdering your people to this very day. You just call them white people now. Because they took on the title in 1854 under the Knights of Columbus Ku Klux Klan over. 
And then as soon as you call him white man, you just call him sovereign. Now, just because you can't read, that's tough cookies. Because that's what it means to mean sovereign. And then when he acts it, then you want to get pissed. Well, ignorance of the law is no excuse, because you're supposed to honor your mothers and fathers like every other living man and woman on earth, man. What makes you think you're different? But we have this tendency to think that we know Jesus and nobody else does. However, that's a false statement. Because it really hasn't worked for us. If anything, we've been getting our butts kicked royally. But yet, nobody talks about salvation more than these people called Negro, Black, and called. Nobody talks about it more than them. And at the same time, no one suffers more than them. On their own land that they don't even know is their own land. You see, you see the problem that we have? Huh? In the political realm of operations, and I walked in and you told me you had some papers over for me to see that is a political act or a civil act demonstrating, proclaiming to the world that you honor your mothers and fathers. What it does in the law position, it makes you descendable. Now you have that honor to live up to because you also have an obligation to the honor behind that. But that is a proclamation, a lawful notice. Now, so what that does in a law perspective, it interferes with the expertures chamber of what you call operative, operative government because with the global world trust, the bonds, you know, with the people who took was the chain is really the bond system that was set up, particularly after solidly February 2nd um, of 18, 71, but the initiation of it was May the 10th of 1861 when the Congress for the United States secretly, under the secret treaty of Verona, undermined and abrogated the treaty and the Constitution in order to institutionalize forced peonage, which you know today as slavery. And then they created the platform, the political platform, by which the artificial debt of the United States Corporation Company in France that Lincoln had bankrupted to convert that debt on the descendants of the Moors with whom they have treaty and obligations superior to the Constitution, being the people of the land. So in order to institutionalize slavery, they had to remove you from the human family. This is where the nom de guerre come in. The nom de guerre are also designated in law, or what you would call color law, as 14th Amendment persons. And this is where, in 1868, they designated that private corporation in France that Lincoln bankrupted as, quote unquote, person person, and then created a double stock trust. And with the double stock trust, they dealt with the secret treaty of Verona, where the bankers of London, under the secret treaty of Verona, backed the finance with the United States Corporation Company that belongs to the Pope, pretending to be government in a double stock operation and then designated the descendants of the Moors as chattels to back their debt. That's the beginning of what you hear loosely referred to as the national debt. That you'd be dealing with, that you'd be hearing politicians talk about. But if you don't know the history, you don't know that they're, they're talking about in the state, do you? And it's also, you can call that, politically you can call it conversion. Conversion. And this is where the service, the function, the political function or service of non de guerre come in. Because it's a violation of international law to do human trafficking. So if they get, if they have the overseers convince you to agree 
to be people of color as if it means Afrocentricity, which you just said that you're artificial. If you agree to be Negro, which means monkey, color, which means artificial, something stained, varnished, or dyed, something hidden, a, a prima facie, a semblance, a simulacrum, distinguished from that which is real. That's why they don't teach law in our communities. As soon as you agree to the brand, you're outside the human family, but you're also non-descendable. That means any estates or inheritances that may come to you by descendancy are automatically escheated. Write that down, escheat. Then you also understand the extracurricular chamber. Sorry, but brother, give me the mic, because I want you want to make sure that you're... Plainly, how do we receive what's uh, descendable? How do we get out a piece of land? Now you're, now you're talking about some of the work that was set up by Lincoln that was undermined, which would include the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands, which was undermined. Now, hold the mic for a minute. This is why you got to know the history. Once you understand the history, not only would you answer your own question, you would also make enter another question. Why do not all of these so-called black scholars inform you when it's documented? They bought, of course, <laughs> of course. Now. And of course, they would be uncomfortable with this kind of conversation because it also exposes them today, if you understand. Now, let's look at how things operate. Uh, also, you want, I want you to write this down because some of these things you're going to do research on your own so the stuff falls together for you. Berlin Conference of 1884-1885. Congress of Germany, Senate Bill, 1861, which is really a coup d'etat. Write that down. Again. Lincoln dealt two law cases making... Re repeat what you just said before. Oh. Berlin Conference. May, yeah. The Berlin Conference, 1884-1885. Berlin Conference. And this is a conference where the Constantinian nations come together under the title Christian nations, and they divide up the Ottoman Empire, which is a, a Sardinian uh, descendant of the Moorish Empire, which is you. You need to understand how politics operate. Oh, do you understand? See, because if you don't know your bloodline, if you can't trace your history, you can't make a claim. Do you understand? Because you're talking about restitution. So how do we trace that? that like, no, no, this this is why I'm giving you reference. It'll become obvious once you start studying. See, no, which is why you're giving... Why are you here in the house of reawakening minds? I'm really telling you stuff that you already know. What I'm doing, I'm putting the puzzle together so that you can have a piece of a mirror so that you can begin to see yourself and begin to take responsibility. An heir who is incompetent is not descendable. You must, must know these rules. We keep looking for the benefit of heritability, not understanding that there's a competence level and there's a status level that's necessary for you to even begin to make the argument. Let's more make a claim. And you know, it's it's like um with all due respect, it's not a not that you're being denied a right, but if you don't understand what you call heritability principles of heirship, that you uh, an heir who's incompetent is not descendable. An heir who does not recognize their bloodline is not descendable. You're called in dishonor. You will be listed as a stateless person. A stateless person has no right of heirship. That's where his chief comes from. This is in actuality 
how corporate operators at North America have been gentrifying communities under what you call as cheap operations. You know, our, our people, as an example, at North America, the, the area, Chakamaxon area, which you know is Philadelphia, is one of the fastest areas, geographical areas, at North America that's being gentrified, which you call Philadelphia. Although it's happening all over, our people see this all over the place, but if you try to have a, an intelligent conversation with them in the functional operations, they will immediately demonstrate total incompetence. They'll start talking about racism, color, and prejudice, never about the state, never about the global world trust, never about the sensibility, and then after making the argument, they'll sign a European's name. Not knowing that, that they're totally, their standing is absolutely dead. And if you start trying to explain it to them, they start getting personal. Oh, you don't like God. And they start making this kind of ridiculous. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They, they, they mean well, but they, they're like little boys and girls. They have no idea how the world runs. And they're going to tell you about the devil all the time. Anything they don't understand is the devil. It's just, it's just, but they've been trained. It's not, it's not really their culture. It is dogma of culture that comes under what's called black codes culture. So they think that is culture because they've been trained, not because they have research. If they do research, they themselves will come out of that on their own. Or are we clear? But as long as they think it's a belief system, they have a tendency, tendency to dismiss it as, oh, yeah, I heard of that, yeah, uh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I gotta go get lunch. You know, they don't you start talking facts and they start going to sleep. I'm serious. Yeah. You start calling police, they start digging in a box. How much you want? <laughs> and then that don't work no more, you just change up to another one. How much you want? And that don't work for two years, they change it to another one. <laughs> How much you want? You start talking facts and they start, you don't believe in the Lord or something? They really don't do that. You start dealing with knowledge, they get insulted. They think you're attacking them. They think you're anti-God. They don't know that God is a generic term. You know, and, and many of them are honest. You know, they're coming from what they think they know. Not knowing that they're under mind control of the priesthood. Because they think the priest is for Jesus, God, and Allah. They don't know the priest work for Rome. You know, and this is why the priests would hide their oath in the secret tree of Rome. This is there for anyone to read, but some people don't read. That's right. You know, and so from a law perspective, since ignorance of the law is no excuse, their position of suffering is an agreement. This is called consent. It's called consent. It's called consent. Now, and of course, people who take advantage of them are un immoral and unethical, but they kind of like take the position of kind of justifying themselves because of this rule. So write this rule down of what is known as the common law. The common law is recognized by civilized men on Earth planet, but the common law its use and its acceptance of use, but it's not anchor, bro. It's, its use and its acceptance of use is based in the principle of the honors of your mothers and fathers, because that's where your heritability is bound in civilization. So if a man honors not the principles of his ancient mothers and fathers, the common law does not apply to them. Not because it couldn't, because it does not apply to men and women who are held in dishonor. Are we clear? As an example, international law that protects human beings, that deals with the human family. This is where the nations of the earth come together and they deal with what is called universal maxims of law. And, and also part of what is used in international law, even in actions of war and restitution, under what is called the Libra Codes, 
is still based in fundamental maxims, a moral and ethical principle. Persons who are held outside of these principles are not protected by them. This is one of the functions of the nom de guerre and why the brand system was used against the descendants of the Moors to make them not only non-descendable so that the European colonists could claim the land under Unum Sanctum and the doctrine of discovery, which most of you do research when you see how European colonists, whenever there's a war claim, or like even, even in contemporary times when our people start arguing estates of lost land, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you have those arguments as an example for my family. And I know this has occurred with many of you. Up in uh, Merchantville, Cherry Hill area, where you see that Cherry Hill Mall where um, Home Depot and that, like that shopping city there is that whole track of land where there used to be a racetrack. Used to be, yeah, racetrack there going all the way into Merchantville and into Pensalkin, where uh, Pensalkin High is right now. All of that land was my family's land. Basically, all the heirs, we should be wealthy. Systematically, they robbed us of that land to um, my son, my Aunt Rose, Theodore, the family land. We were young then. That's, that's systematic. Um, a few years, as a matter of fact, I remember in 89, um, we all got letters. A lot of the heirs got letters. And they were um, selling off the last part of our lands. And they were sending us checks. I got a check and I never cashed. Do you, do you understand? Now, logically, most of the family, I have to understand, except for a few of them, there might have been that I remember at that time. At that time. Um, and some people I knew growing up that I didn't know was my family until they called us to the Hyatt Hotel because that's where they were meeting. They had, you know, all the people from around the area who all these heirs to all of this land. And I met a lot of people that I didn't know was my family. And um, that I can recall, there may have been no more than 19 who were nationals. The rest of them were unconscious. And most of them were younger. And some of them didn't even know what their birthright was, although they had A's and E's. Do, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Now, I'm sure that many of you in this room can do some tracing in your family and find that land and stuff that your great-grandmothers had and your family had that y'all don't have anymore. Now y'all renting or doing something, don't even know that the land was is cheated. And that even the heirs, if they came together, still have right of claim. If they know what to do. But we don't have the culture in our communities to teach them those things that are necessary for restoration of the state. And this is another reason why I did the reversion article. You know, um, but again, it's another reason why you're in the House of Ram. And it's another reason why you put things in trust because you're here at the House of Reawakening Minds to get some of this information to start some processes of saving your families, saving the next generation even though you've been injured. Meaning that if you're still breathing, it's late, but it ain't too late, if you get the point. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all late. But it's not too late. But understand this, and this is real, and this is honest, and this is not a knock. So don't take it personal. You can't do what you do not know. But in estate law, not knowing is not excused either. Are we clear? Conversion. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Why? Because it's based in the common law. Why? Because it's based in maxims of civilization. Why? Because it's based in heritability. Why? Because it's based in the honor of your mothers and fathers and your bloodline. 
And if you're not in the honor of your mothers and fathers, you're not heritable. Get over yourself, grow up, start studying, and start fixing this thing. If you don't want it, do something for the next generation. Show some kind of honor. Sometime in your life of breathing. All right. I'll know. Because it will be done with knowledge, not with emotionalism, nor with belief systems. The people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, not a lack of belief, not a lack of prayer, not a lack of other stuff, for lack of knowledge. But they keep treating knowledge as if it came from the devil. That's where our problem is. You're at the house of Ryan to get some of this knowledge. To fix things, not to emotionalize over. So if you know about the Global World Trust, you must know if the air doesn't speak up, your estate is automatically hypothecated. Write that down. Here we go, so you don't get confused with the spelling. And this is what's done with the Uno Sanctum policy. And this is what the United States Corporation company operators administratively do every day that they deal with you, whether it's from a traffic ticket to a credit card claim to a mortgage foreclosure to your labor to any organization business that you have. It, it comes under the expertures chamber of the IRS. And it's already hypothecated. And this is back to understanding why Nova said in 1913, if you do not do anything else, declare your nationality. Because it's related to the world's largest estate that you didn't know you even had. Meaning that you don't take, you don't deal with this emotionally. Right. You can respect the great work that he did. It's better to study what he did and then understand why he's called an overdrawing, why he's called a prophet. That's pretty you know what I'm saying? Don't be caught up in salami baloney type thing. Right. That's not how you deal with us. Like when I claim my nationality and I have my ID in my pocket, which mm -hmm. I keep with me all the time. This is what you want to be, it must be in your heart. Yes, it is. Yes, when it's in your heart, with or without the card, you can defend it. Because they're obligated. See, this is what you, me, we have to understand. And, and when you're talking, talking to some people about this stuff sometimes, you will see that it's not in their concept of conversation, understanding that these people already know this, just because they're not talking to you on this level, they're under obligation. So they're not going to volunteer, educate you when you should have been educated by your mothers and your fathers. We, yes. Now, this is called, this is called treaty slash constitution duties and enforcement obligations. This is what, this is why the Pope is telling you this now. And he's addressing directly to Obama and the Congress and the Supreme Court for this enforcement. And I even showed him the letter. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't have to, I'm just saying to you, once you can get it through your head right. that these magistrates are masons, stop thinking that you've got to convince them. When you, know, you know what it's sort of like? I mean, it's when they see how you come across like you're trying to explain something to them, or you're trying to let them know, they know that you don't know at that point. It doesn't mean that you don't know. It's, just, it's like, once you understand the real politics, you don't sit around and play with them. You tell them what you want. They already know that they're, listen, meaning that, like this. When you understand the coup d'etat of 1861, you know that these politicians know that the United States is not a country that is a private corporation belonging to the Jesuits. That's right. 
You know he's a mason. You know he's not going to sit up here and explain that to you and agree with you on, on some floor that he's thinking as a court. Right. He expects you to call him the chamber. <laughs> the sidebar. There you go. He's not going to have go along with you have this conversation in front of these monkeys, monkey product chattel who think that human beings are colored because they're his property. He got bonds on them. Sometimes they clear the court. Exactly. Right. Not that you would want to, you want to take an opportunity to educate your family because you're your brother's keepers. But half of them are Negro monkeys because they want to be. Because they can go in the dictionary and see tribal black Negro's monkey. But if they think it's an ID and they want to insist on being Negroes, you know, voluntary servitude, involuntary servitude is unlawful. But if they keep on to volunteer as chattel property, this man is not going to feel guilty about giving them what they want. Okay. When he, when his, when Susie's going to college at their expense. When these big buildings are built on bonds that are on their backs and they don't know it. Because they're to save the read something. <laughs> no, I'm serious. And you, I don't know. It, 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 it's like this. There's one thing of not knowing something, meaning being kind of innocently ignorant, but there's another thing being arrogant and ignorant. When you're arrogant and ignorant, the person who's taking advantage of you don't have to feel guilty. And this is kind of how the European kind of takes it, because we're always like, yeah, see, God made us, and our God made us, and didn't make nobody else, and we saved, and we got a special personal relationship, personal phone number, yeah. Well, you got all that. He's, his position is the old boy. You make your own sandwiches. He's one that. That's so true. No, I'm just saying. And then when he's doing it, now we mad because we ain't got no sandwiches. Never look for a sandwich program. A Negro sandwich program. Now tell me, let's tell the truth. That's what we do. That's so true. We so saved, but we got all these programs. We got all these whole programs for You know, it. Let's be honest. Let's, 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 let's kind of look at this honestly. If you're so arrogant to keep projecting to the world that God made you and didn't make nobody else, and you're really, really, the really, really special one, mm -hmm. then you, you don't need no check. <laughs> all you need is Jesus. Well, no yeah. You got it all. You're telling the world that. Now, tell me that's not true. Tell me that's not the position that many of our people take. Now, from somebody's position who's taking advantage of you, you ain't supposed to be asking for nothing. If you got the supreme everything, you the one that don't need no sandwich. I'm going to talk about all these opera suit organizations to deal with symptoms of you ain't got nothing. When you just said that you got it all. I mean, let's, let's be fair. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. If, you know, like, I'm struggling, we all struggling. You know, I like to put my prayers in on working and stuff like that. But I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I got a personal cell phone with God and Jesus and this and all. also have to recognize 
how we look to other civilized people. Self-righteous, arrogant, superior, and ain't got doo-doo to show for it. Broken families, broken homes, and broke, drug infested, and in jail. On a majority basis, and then talking about salvation, and then wonder why the children don't trust us anymore, don't believe in us. And out there trying to survive the best they can, uh, they ain't prayed. No, what they're living is the dead culture that we put on them in the name of blackness. What they say? No, but we're not going to take that responsibility off. Right. Uh -uh. However, the world holds us to it. That's called common law. And ignorance of the law is no excuse. Mm -hmm. It is our mothers and fathers who are the founders of civilization, the mothers and fathers of the human family, set up the Renaissance that taught the Europeans that are ruling the world today. Yeah. And then we turn around and live dead culture and then try to impose it on a civilized world and get pissed when we get rejected. Mm -hmm. And the world, world is saying to us, take our one. You're getting the black culture that you yourself asked for. Because that's what it is. Then you're buying and selling with the mark and the number of another man's name and wonder why you don't own crap. And then making excuses. And then condemning people who are enforcing the Constitution to try to solve this problem when it's the duty of every man, every woman, and every child even to confess their own. But they won't confess their own, but they want the benefit of their airship. It is not going to happen. Again, you're in the house of Ram to get some of this information so that you can start fixing some of your problems that you have currently and that you're going to acceleratedly be faced with in these coming months. It ain't going to be off. It's already on you. It's not coming. It's on you right now. Whether you sleep or not is another issue. It's on you right now. Right. Because they're trying to liquidate everyone's, what's left of your estate to satisfy their private corporate debt while they still have control of governmental seats that they have no delegated authority to hold or to operate. That's why you put everything in trust. Are we clear? It's on. Clear. It's on. You need to understand what's been operating to understand how to operate. Are we clear? If you don't give them, yeah, give them like Give us examples of how to put something in trust. All right. Constitutions and treaties are national wills. The offices that are held under constitutional officer operations are called offices of trust. This is where resources and estates of people, nationals, and citizens in any government is protected because those are called unalienable rights. That means there can be no lien on a birthright. It is not sellable, nor is it transferable to another. Governments are erected and put in place to preserve and to protect those unalienable rights. Governments do not give them rights, but they have no rights to give. They only have obligations and duties to secure those unalienable rights. All right. The coup d'etat that took place in 1861 by the Congress operatives during the Lincoln administration was to secretly convert the republic into a kingship oligarchy for themselves. Kingship oligarchy. That kingship oligarchy is known in these days as the U.S. democracy. That's the password for the kingship oligarchy that was set up in 1861 and solidified February 2nd, 1871, and that's called the Act of Congress 1871. And so the Republic, where their obligation to treaty and constitution as trustees 
was abridged and abandoned, and they themselves used the platform of government to actually wage war on the nationals of the land. That's the institutionalization of slavery, that's the theft of your birthright, and that's the purpose and the reason why Luke Raleigh set up the old Canine Temple in 1913 for the restoration of the treaty and constitutional obligations of the Queen of England, who is the owner of the United States Corporation Company, and the restoration of the estate to the proper heirs. That's the basis of the Moorish Divine and National Movement of the world, period. Was it the slavery mm -hmm. uh, way before 1861? Can you, can you... Now, all right, this is what you must know. Now, you're going to do research with this. The Wigamore Party, right now, Wigamore. Wigamore Party, Horace Greeley, New York newspaper cart uh, tycoon. Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan, oh, 1854 to 1863, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Chicago, Illinois. Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan, oath celebrated with the Mummers Parade at Philadelphia for the theft of your birthright. They assemble at 6 and Moore Street, traditionally. That's the celebration of the fall of the Moors. That's the celebration of you being used to back the United States Corporation Company bonds since the Civil War. That's the base of the bond system of 55 Water Street, New York. That's the basis of all the UST bonds that have been sold to governments around the world and also why those treasuries of the world are now collapsing since the heirs of the states have finally started making public declaration and proclamation and putting it out publicly. What it does is kills the bond because the heirs are starting to demonstrate competency. They can never capture the instruments because they will never give up the instruments which are called baritary instruments. That's marriage certificates, birth certificates, Cusick numbers of the Social Security, etc. They're baritary instruments and they are bank bonds. You're told they're divine instruments between you and the Lord. They're really the Lord's of mine. They have scripture chamber instruments. They come under the Department of Commerce. Marriage certificates are bank bonds. Birth certificates are bank bonds. They're shipping and battery instruments. Logically, when you become conscious of the, of the global world trust set up by the postal world after the fall of the Red House, and you start declaring your nationality and making it public, you're starting to kill the T-bonds. It is demonstrated in symbolically in the movie The Wizard of Oz when the house falls down on the Wicked Witch and her stockings curl up. Those are stockings. Stockings curl up under the house, which is the zodiac, which is the culture. When the culture comes back down to earth, people learn the culture. Then they follow the yellow brick road, which is the gold and the silver. And then Emerald City, which is your green star where the Wizard of Oz, who's been imitating God, is exposed by doll, spelled God backwards. And then Dorothy is told, you just bumped your head, you're home. Oh, wow. You know, when you understand it, it's telling you the story. It's actually telling you the story. It's actually telling you the story. Yeah, no, all of them were black. Black's actually Europeans. You'll learn that later, too. You know, um, and this is back where you learn etymology. Now, you want to write this down. This is the etymological basis of black. Here we go. And it means pale and bright colors. And our people think it means that means. And every time you say black power, you say, Hell you with command power. So you're, you're just cast a spell on your power and your thing. Because you know you can't read. 
No, that's right. You can tell, I can tell you right in the college dictionary. I like that. In an unabridged <laughs> college and dictionary. Now that's that down all um, that, that may you may have that in there, but don't tell you the American who the real American is. This is why they used to have what they call the brown paper bag test. But the real deal is copper is the alchemical metal for our star, which is Venus. And that's the copper penny test. That's how you can tell who the real American is. Do you understand? Um Mm -hmm. It's called the copper. See, when you look at Moorish buildings, architecture, even all throughout North America, you see the older buildings, their eaves are capped in copper. That's the alchemical metal of Venus, which is our star, in the cherry tree that George Washington chopped down. The cherry tree is the red flag with the five-pointed green star in the center. The alchemical metal for Venus is copper. Uh, the American people are the copper complexion people of the land. Now, the Europeans added what they call a connotative introduction. That's connotation to interject themselves in order to steal your estate. Go ahead, good brother. 1828, uh, Noah Webster Dictionary, American. A native of America. So a native of America. Ori originally applied to the aboriginals or the copper colored races found here by the Europeans. All right. But now applied to the descendants of Europeans. So now they just gave you denotation and interjected connotation. Now, if, one, if you don't understand the conference they had in semantic, a person who doesn't know how to read will take that whole thing as definition and give up their birthright. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. But when they tell you the truth, so original means true. It is origin. That's right. So now you understand the copper penny test. What they used to do in the 1800s, copper uh, on the brown paper bag, they used to call it. And if you caught the brown paper bag, it was rejected. Why? Because you were being conquered. And after a while, you know, our people started not wanting to be themselves, which was, was the purpose. And once they got you not wanting to be yourself, they made up tags for you, not knowing that you were agreeing to be property. And put on the stock market. It's back to the issue of descendability. So now, when you look up the common law, you look up you deal with what is known as the ancient traditions and customs of your forefathers from time immemorial. And it is that common law principle that is respected by peoples of civilized government around the world. And that is where the common law can be used as a position of right of claim to trump the canon law upon which the 14th Amendment artificial person conversion is based, and the Roman law of operations. However, if one is not in one's own proper person, one cannot use the common law because you have no tie to the traditions and customs that would supersede the Roman law. Therefore, your claim of right would be considered by tacit acquiescence abandoned. And this is again one of the tricks that they use not to fulfill the operations of the Bureau of Freemen um, of re the refugees of the land, people who've been occupied. Um, the Freemen's Bureau, which was supposed to teach these people back their culture, give them back their names, their nationality, and every man, and every woman, and every child, minimally minimally was to receive 40 acres and a mule, farm equipment, house, finance, to fund it, and all of the land would essentially be given back, and the Inquisition operations under the Doctrine of Discovery would be reversed. This is one of the reasons why they murdered Lincoln, and they closed the Freedman's Bureau, and then they created the artificial personage conversion of the 14th Amendment, 1868, 
right after they closed the Freedmen's Bureau and registered all of these Moors as Negroes, Blacks, and Colors. As a matter of fact, in this territory, right here, that they called Delaware, and registered them as Christian property. Given numbers and put on the stock market by hypothecation. And so all their labor, all of their wealth, all any businesses they own, profit or non-profit, lands, parks, etc., held by the federal operations, was converted to the Pope of Rome through the Jesuit order on Jekyll Island. Mm -hmm. That was solidified later, but that's what that's all about. That's the theft of your birthright. That's European duality say what? The Europeans are living off your virtues. You need to know what he's talking about. If you don't know the history, sounds like an interesting, beautiful statement made by somebody who loves his people and trying to help them. But if you don't know the real history, you have no idea how deep it goes and how important it is for you to know exactly what motivated him to found the, the old Canaanite temple and why he met with the Queen of England. He's talking the secret treaty of Verona. Because they have a second star. So when you see them three stars and them three bars in Washington, excuse me, y'all got this right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <coughs> when you're from Washington, District of Columbia, They even have no tax. That is the family crest used by George Washington, who chopped down the cherry tree. It's adopted under the secret tree of Verona for the territory of the Seven Hills under Pope Polk who was also one of the heads of the Klan operations, Knights of Columbus, etc. And the government was moved from Philadelphia to Washington, District of Columbia, under the Secret Treaty of Rona. And George Washington's family crest was adopted for the operations there, although the people under that jurisdiction could not vote, and still to this day. Do you understand? This is this, the first star is London. I mean, pardon me, I apologize. The first star is the Vatican, Rome. Second star is London, <laughs> District of London. Sovereign city states. They don't pay taxes. Third star, Washington, District of Columbia, sovereign city state. In the Trinity operations, of Inquisition operations at North America under European colonial operations enforcement. So you have the Popes of Rome who, in accord with Thessalonians 1 and 2, have taken the throne of God, declared themselves God. They make the laws. London makes the barratry instruments for the operations of the Inquisition, i.e. counterfeit. And then the United States Corporation Company goes to and fro the earth devouring nations, stealing their gold and their resources, and they work as a trinity operations. That's what's going on. That is the politics. Not maybe, that is the politics. And all over the Knights of Columbus, Skull and Bones, Illuminati, Knights Templar, Knights of Malta, Eastern Stars, Doors of Isis, Kaikos, Ku Klux Klan, Union Guard, White Familia, etc., all on the mission of stealing the birthright of the Moors under the secret treaty of Verona and the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885. This is the source of your politics under the Unum Sanctum policy and the doctrine of discovery, and you're told you're suffering from color games and racism to keep you off of what I just told you. And all of your so-called leaders know this information. And all politicians and scholars know this information. 
And particularly, so-called black leaders' job is to keep you away from this information, keep you marching and praying, and talk about you are somebody. While they themselves, 90% of them are 32, 32, and 32 uh, three degree masons, and then taken to the mountaintop, which is the Great Seal, which is the insignia of the Moorish nation and civilization on Earth planet. And this is why you don't see any politicians speak under the Great Seal, but they speak under the bird, the Roman bird with the wings up. Are we clear? Although when you look at the note, you'll see the Great Seal of the United States and of is a substantive connector. So the sovereign has been silenced and Illuminati has taken your place and been stealing your birthright and administrating the World Global Trust for the Pope's of Rome and the Jesuit Order and with the military complex machine known as the United States military. Enforced locally by Roman soldiers who call themselves policemen who are really members of the gangs of New York for killing off the indigenous people for the Pope to Rome, the United States Corporation Company in their conversion operations to transfer your estate artificially to the United States Corporation Company that Lincoln bankrupted in France that's now registered in Puerto Rico that went bankrupt, I think it was um, September last of 12. 2012. Again, and this is where the Manchurians and the Russians, i.e. China and Russia, has told them no more shells and they started dumping them U.S. T-bonds as a countermeasure to the European operations and told them to enforce the Constitution to which they have obligations and they have been in abridgment in severe breach of trust since 1861, which is the source of the world's wars that have been continuing ever since then to maintain the fraud of the global world trust, i.e. the theft of the birthright of the Moors by which the world has been run ever since 1861. That's why you put everything in trust. Because you're the heirs to the estate. Now, since so many people amongst you who have been assigned, assigned positions to teach you these things, and Duali also set up a trust to protect you. And the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, which was registered as a civic organization, and then Marcus Garvey was teaching governmental structure, and Duali was teaching nationality, and in the last year of his life, Nobu Ali, as a countermeasure to infiltrators, adopted a religious affidavit for the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, or the Moorish Temple of Science. And that, um, the religious, uh, pardon me, the corporate name for the Moorish Temple of Science, the corporate name is the Moorish Science Temple of America, which was established in 1928, as its corporate name to protect the estate of the people who were coming from different religious organizations but didn't have a knowledge of the background, of the history, or really what the Moorish movement was about. So it was a platform by which the people could come in and learn about the truth about their nationality and birthright, not to be confused with what you think religion is. It's restoration of the lost estate, the real politics of Earth. And logically, those who um, have been taking backdoor payouts to keep the fraud going, do not want this information out. And do not want people like me telling you this. Why? Because it also exposes a lot of people who you start recognizing should have told you these things. And knew it all the time. Then you understand when you hear people say they've been to the mountaintop, because you find out that the mountaintop in masonry is that great seal pyramid. And that means you've been given all the degrees. Then you're given a compass and a square, you understand, which is isonomy, which is structured government. And so they start finding out that people knew this stuff and they told you, and they've been taking like coins in the background. They ain't getting silver, but it's the same thing getting those three pieces of silver type thing. They sold you out. It's called the Judas factor. 
That's another reason why a lot of people don't want this information out, because it exposes everyone mm -hmm. on both sides, Europeans and Asians. And people who've been playing you around emotionally, arguing colors and human beings, and no matter what color you are, and the black people, and the green people, and the orange people, and the purple people, and the black people, and the white people, and the burgundy people, and it doesn't matter. And not knowing, as soon as they win that paradigm, they go into the United States Census Bureau with a code system set up by Frederick Johann Blumenbach and Carlos Linnaeus to distinguish their property from the human family. And these people think that that means Afrocentric identity, and it actually makes you a stateless person. And it justifies them doing the bonds on you because you're outside the human family. And therefore, if you're outside the human family, the international law don't apply to you because they are national wills. In other words, keep it simple, because you can easily understand this. Let's, let's keep it simple as an example. Let's say um, someone from uh, Manchuria come, come anywhere on the world, or what you call Tiani, or Chinese, that's Tiani, Chinese, and they come and they start calling them call themselves light-skinned yellow guys. In law, they just lost their birthright. That's not hard for you to understand. But yet, you took a little bit of people of more white canine descent, and they think they can go around talking about their light-skinned and dark-skinned black people, and they think that human rights apply. They have nationalities all around the world. They come under international law. Anyone who's not of a nation has no claim on the national will, which is what constitutions and treaties are. Does that not make common sense? It makes great sense. But the term black, what, what about that being... It's called a non what, here. What about that being the antithesis to white supremacy or white racism? Now, but you must know what white supremacy is. What is white supremacy? Now, I'm going to... Now, Pay attention to this. This is a good exercise. Good exercise. Repeat that and then explain the position. We know that that's out there. Now, so it's not a rejection, but I'm going to show you something that is very important. So if you say white supremacy, then that's a presumption automatically that you know what you're talking about. Am I correct? I mean, we all, because we all do that. Me, I would say it, and many people say it. So now, you're required to explain white supremacy is foundation. And don't make stuff up. But also recognize you have an obligation when you throw out these phases to know what you're talking about. Now, question. When did white supremacy doctrine come into play? White supremacy doctrine or the term white, Caucasian, white supremacy. Now see how you're equating? Now there's nothing wrong with that. I want you to pay attention to yourself. Go ahead, that's fine. But now pay attention to this. Pay attention to this, you all. The deal that you're doing here, what this exercise we're doing, okay. is making each other responsible. Okay. Means that we pick up terms and phrases that are thrown in society under the conference of semantics not ever being challenged to explain ourselves, but assuming that people know what we're talking about and agree with us and then take that position not knowing that we're neutralizing ourselves because we think that we're speaking in favor of a position. Teachers. Oh, do you understand? White supremacy. Now let me give you some reference points. Wigglemore Party, are you familiar? Wigglemore Party. Of 1859, I am not. Wigglemore Party, all right, let's talk this. Horace Greeley, you're familiar? Newspaper man. Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan Oath, are you familiar? Yes. Mother's Parade, are you familiar? Just learned that today. Kansas and Nebraska Act, are you familiar? No. The split up of the Wigglemore Party and the formation of the Republican Party. Are you familiar? Vaguely. All right. And the agreement 
that the Europeans under the Republican Party, after the split of the Uyghur Party, would take on the title white people that did not apply to them prior to 1854. Are you familiar? I don't have that recollection. I thought it was well, now, when you say white supremacy, that's what the world is accepting that you know the history of what you're talking about. And if you say that, make those statements without having a background knowledge, you would actually be undermining yourself. Yes. And the consequences of which you would suffer, uh, you're held to it. In regards. Meaning that if I put a sign outside talking about I'm a surgeon, and I start messing people up with rusty butter knives and stuff, and then somebody comes at me, you know what I'm saying? Well, see, every surgeon don't know about the anatomy of the body. You got sign out there saying you're a surgeon? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you take one penny for services, you're held to it. Now, and when you call that European white man, you just call him sovereign. Now, in law, as far as law is concerned, you know what you're talking about. If you say it and don't qualify it, are we clear? Are we clear? Extremely. Now, now, in law, you're held to it. And in law, they can use it against you. Because you just assigned them. Now, by not knowing the history, logically, you would make those statements according to how it's thrown around in the community because you feel people saying this thing and you're looking at it in the context in which it is used, right? So you feel safe saying it. You think you're, you think you're actually fighting for your people. Do you, do you, so you, have an you know, in your mind. You have an understanding of how the word is being used today. And guess what they say in law? Ignorance of the law is no excuse. And what do we do? We start making excuses, and now we're in contempt. And then you're treated with contempt. Now we're manner, and we work what we started with. Now they were really racist. <laughs> no, seriously. No, that's true. Now, let's talk. Let's talk. We have more party. Ours really came to the more party. That's why I gave you references so you can do research. When you do research, you'll find out when they took on the title, once you understand the history, you will not call them white people without qualification, will you? Will you? Not knowing that you're the white man. Got it. You, you, it's a legal status. But if you bought into the brand, not the deal system, you would think that white and black are identities. Once you use it in that category, it indicates two things. Your incompetence and your abandonment of your estate. Logically, if you don't know the history, that doesn't dawn on you that that's what you're saying. It, it, it just, it, because you've accepted the connotative, not definition, resentment. The only definition to the word is its etymon, its etymology. It remains for life. In other words, the mother of the word, the matrix, is always its mother. Any connotative entry is not a definition, it is a presentment distinguished from definition. If a connotative presentment is accepted as definition, that means that the connotative conference or connotation by Europeans to set up a language system for the preservation of forced servitude under the designation of slavery is operative and well. Now, in law, if you use it, if you adopt it, you are declared incompetent and stateless persons. It has its function. It has its service. Now, upon understanding the principle of reclamation of a state on nationality, these things are exposed to you so that you can fix your language. Why? Culture is in the language. Now, again, when you're dealing with a state or, res or re what's called restitution of a state, if you mix connotative presentment with denotation in a legal and lawful argument, the opposite party can defeat you if they choose to. It may confuse you because your concept is that you're coming from a moral position. 
you're passionately talking, you know, ethically and moral principle that any living being should know. And wonder why you keep losing. Connotative linguistics. When you don't know what you're talking about and you're declared incompetent. Then they put a barrister on you from England who's really secretly a deputy knight under the secret treaty of Verona for the reversion of your estate to the private corporate United States under semantic language of barratry to convert your estate to the United States Corporation Company that belongs to the Jesuits and you've been trained to think it's a country with the help of your black leader guys who you think love Jesus, God, and Allah, who got a secret 501c3 skull and bones agreement. Are we clear? Yep. And if you don't know this history, you have a tendency to repeat what you hear thinking that it's legitimate when it's actually designed for the heirs or the slave to what? Confess his own slavery. And it is said this way, it is better to sit in the corner silently and be thought a fool than to open your mouth, remove all doubt, and have the black codes enforced upon you. Because that's what happens every day. And that's not meant to be pejorative. It is honestly and factually what takes place every day in communities that are called black communities. They don't even know that every time they, there's a ticket, there's a charge, and anything, that there's a bond that correlates with that charge. And it's not based on moral right or wrong. It's based on the stock market. It's not based on justice. And so when they don't get justice, it confuses them because their concept is that these people are government. They're private, corporate, human traffickers under the unum sanctum policy of the doctrine of discovery through the expertures chamber of the Inquisition operations Torquay model, now called the IRS. That's why all organizations I get an IRS number. Those are tithing numbers. <laughs> Roman tax. Now that's the reality. And that's just, and we just touched on some of the stuff, but, but what we've given you is primal information that even a child can understand if presented at an early age. But if you don't educate them in an the early age, they're already handicapped as soon as they go into the world. They already got the chain that they have is the chain of ignorance. As a matter of fact, how many parents bring and deliver their children to the John D. Rockefeller, uh, Frederick T. Gates, Skull and Bones operations called the, called the uh, school system at North America? and never read the philosophy page, which is there for everybody to see, where they tell you that they're going to keep these people dumb and make them docile. It's right there documented. It's documented. They, and they've got all kinds of books and read and have all kinds of organizations of PT meetings and a whole bunch of stuff and talk about children's self-esteem and we love the children and we want to make things better for the children and let us pray and never read the philosophy page and they keep delivering their children to John D. Rockwell's Skull and Bones operations and then wonder why their children can't compete. Oh, they forgot to say this other part. Oh, that's because they're saved. Then they start that kind of stuff. And they're being prepared for death in prisons. And it's not a secret. That's the problem is that it's not even a secret. This stuff is documented. Do you understand the difficulty that other civilized people have with these people in North America of Moorish descent that keep insisting that they're black and then keep complaining about the black codes that they never even read that destroy your families? That's documented too. Never read the black codes, and that's what's used against their families. That's, that's a manual that's used by all local, federal, state governments. 
and adopted in all the states in 1868. Do you understand the problem that we have? Do you think the world sits around and feels sorry for these people that keep talking about they know God, but they won't even dare on read? They're going to talk about gods they do not see and love not their brothers and sisters whom they see every day, and then present themselves to the world, and then get rejected. Now the world's racist. Race is the human species. They can't even that going to read. And then they're arrogant with it when you try to give them the facts. Arrogant. They're not just ignorant, they're arrogant. Now, with each other, we love our families, we love our people, so therefore we have compassion. But, but you have to put yourself in another man's moccasins and understand how the civilized world was living off of us and he's feeling sorry for us. It'd be something different if we were humble and not knowing, but we're arrogant. So, right? You never watch our people when it comes to not religion, but our claims on religion. You cannot find a more self righteous and arrogant people than ours. When you start talking about God, Jesus, Allah, Moses, Muhammad, and stuff, we get this superiority complex that your mind can't imagine. <laughs> we got a personal relationship like nobody else got. They can't even begin to touch us. <laughs> we know Jesus, God, and Allah like, like nobody else on planet Earth. And as far as the civilized world is concerned, no problem. Y'all make your own sandwiches. So when we start turning around asking for programs and nobody builds programs to help the black people, you don't need help, you got Jesus. I mean, let's be honest. If you got all this going on, why are you always begging? Why are you always marching? Why are your babies dying when you're younger? Why are your families all broke up? You say it if you got all this going on, not by what somebody else say, by what we keep on professing. And too arrogant to examine our own position. Does the world have an obligation to sit around and feel sorry for us? Not at all. You know, like if somebody is lost along the way, right? Any kind of way in life. And they humbly come to any man, it doesn't matter what it is. And come to any divine principle and ask for help humbly. And help is given. It is given with purity and love. A man coming with his arrogant, he got it going on and you don't. He ain't got a damn business asking you for nothing. If you got it like that, make your own sandwich. <laughs> and that's how the world is looking at us. Amen. And we take it like they're dissing us. Because we keep coming with this self-righteousness, this superiority. I don't know about you. Uh, what, did, did you hear that? I said, uh, I don't know about you. <laughs> but I... Sorry, get me out. Can you want me to say it again? Wow. I... Preach! Got a personal relationship with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you might not know God, but I know God. <laughs> I said, I know God. one more time. I know God. I got his personal number. <laughs> So why do I need some marching program? <laughs> why do I need NAACP, PPRP on me, the color coalition, somebody else's coalition, and some new program for Negroes? If you got all this going on, you don't need none of all this stuff. Unless you're lying your teachers off. Because I'm telling you, My cell phone ain't working, he ain't answering, something's up. <laughs> no, let's be honest. Because if anybody needs rescuing by the divine order, oh, it's our people yes. and our communities. No question. And that cannot be denied. But some people with self-righteousness will deny it just to preserve their hypocrisy 
while their babies are dying, families are all falling apart, the jails are filled with these young brothers and sisters, gangs of New York members are killing brothers and sisters, young people on the street, and stealing their organs, and they sit around talking about salvation with their hypocritical selves. And as soon as they're out of a job, three months, they go in the army for room and start murdering people around the world to keep this man in power who never did anything to them. And then come back all shot with viruses, all broke down, mentally broken, disengaged with their families, and getting poor veteran services, and they marching again. But they saved. They know the Lord. Do you understand how hypocritical, how black-heartedly, vilely, violently, ugly, hypocritical that is? But they can't see themselves, can they? Can they? Why the world don't like black people? Because they are hypocrites. But I'm not so sad at them. I'm not so sad at them. All the world is waiting for these people to honor their mothers and fathers like other human beings are obligated to honor their mothers and their fathers that their days may be longer upon this earth land that the Lord their God has given them. That's their law system. But they don't want to hear that kind of stuff because they got a personal relationship. Well, they got a personal relationship. They better call him yesterday because they're in trouble and they have no idea how much trouble they're in because they're getting ready to get exterminated. And most of them never read Executive Order 11490. Most of them never read the King Alfred Plan or the Rex 84 Plan, in addition to the King Alfred Plan with the biological warfare for extermination and genocide yeah. against stateless persons. And the devil ain't doing it. United States Corporation company operatives have been doing it and are doing it now and are accelerating that activity as we speak. And it got a daggone thing to do with belief systems. And if they're so saved, go ahead and do what you do. Because it appears to me that whatever God's womb gave them that they've been talking about been abandoned them a long time ago. Now that's what the them, that's what the evidence shows, not what they say. We talk about let's deal with the evidence. What does the evidence show? They've been abandoned. Because if anybody arrogantly, and if they have any honor whatsoever, sit around and talk about the gods and the salvation of these so-called black communities, and that is the established condition, they're lying. All you see is broken families, destruction, drugs, youth dying younger and younger, and the jails packed with them, with all of their salvation and their godliness. And I know that some people get mad because Taiki Guy says these things bluntly. But you're not going to fix anything that you won't admit is broken. Now, when the Pope defeated the Moors, and when the Red House fell in 1492, which you know as the Alhambra, they set up a global world trust. And with that global world trust, they administer all conquered lands and peoples of those lands under the World Global Trust. They use it both phrases, global world trust and world global trust. And the United States Corporation Company operatives are the direct war room administrators of that trust. The QCIC number is a red number that's on the Social Security card. With and without dashes is used both ways for entries into the Global World Trust for people who are physically led, dead, as well as physically alive. Dead or alive, those barratry instruments have been and are still being used to enter and exit the Global World Trust for the United States Corporation Company for conversion of your estate under that trust. That's the fact. Now, the fact that your so-called leader guys who know this information because, because they got these secret oaths won't tell their own people and keep on having them talk about salvation and everything distracted from the real world, the world is not feeling sorry for you. Because nobody talks about a knowledge of God like we do. So since we know all this stuff, back to like I said earlier, 
far as we're concerned, you got your peanut butter sandwiches. So anything they take is just crumbs. If you first align with the God type thing, what do you need? How dare you claim to the world that you need anything? This is back to where Yahshua would say, you know, how dare you talk about a God you do not see and love not your brothers and sisters you see every day. Likewise in law, and this is where the common law comes in. That's why I tell people to look up the common law. How dare you try to use the common law when you honor not your mothers and your fathers? Certainly you are not descendable by law. You should figure that out without somebody having to run it into the ground. However, for some reason, we got to run it into the ground because people still don't get it. Meanwhile, with House Bill Resolution 2847 under the guise of employment, they're still in all these people's accounts. They don't even know if bank accounts belong to, to the Romans, don't belong to you. Anything you give them is an unsecured loan. And they're getting ready to liquidate those accounts that you think is yours while we're sitting around talking about salvation. Because we won't deal with reality. To convert to themselves their private debt to the United States Corporation Service Company that Lincoln bankrupted in 1860. That's what the coup d'etat of 1861 is where the Congress adjourned seeing the deal made for themselves a kingship oligarchy. Todd. The Congress adjourned seen the day of it. Yes. They, but they were still meeting after 1861 during the, during the uh, Civil War. Is that not true? Of course. Person? Of course. Now, repeat that very clearly. Say it again. Say the mic. I'm just on tape. The Congress, the Congress for the United States, for the United States, adjourned seen the day. May 10th of 1861. Continue. But they still did they not still meet during the Civil War? So now you have what is called de facto operations, don't you? Go in the law book. Go in the book. De facto. Go look through the petition. De facto. <laughs> Is that also the reason why um, some of these Yaks will come over here and they'll have on their uh, status uh, white? That's why, they, that's why you see it on their passports. But you see a lot of them will show it to our people because our people will start making negative statements like, oh, you think you're a white man and think you're better than us and we've been here a long time and you come in here getting businesses and the old houses that we can't get for a dollar and you come in and our neighborhood taken from the black community and they start all that stuff. They come under this national law, they're under their mothers and fathers, not doing wrong. See, our people keep on trying to justify their own corruption. That's where our problem is. Is that we're corrupt and won't admit it. We're corrupt and won't see it. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And so when nationals come to North America and start making economic progress very quickly and get buildings that we can't even afford to touch, and within months they sell them, you, they sell them our sister some houses plaques, braids and stuff, <laughs> toilet paper, suds, and then before you know it, they're doing all right. They, whether they can speak the language clearly or not, they don't care who the mayor is. Because they're dealing with international and constitutional law. These are the same things that we're obligated to, but we won't step up to the constitutional fold of government. 